Good evening everyone and a warm welcome from Pune where I am sitting from the Foundation for Research and Education in Endoscopy. This webinar is brought to you by this foundation in association with MQR Pharmaceuticals and at the outset let me thank MQR for this, uh, you know, for their uh, 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 yeah, for their support. Also a good morning for the viewers from the US and from the other side of the globe. And similarly, good afternoon or whatever is for other people who may have joined in from other parts of the world. So today's presentation and today's webinar is about video editing and publishing and presentation. It's a mix. So we are going to have a presentation by none other than Dr. Truptesh Kothari. Dr. Truptesh is the Director of our Developmental Endoscopy Lab at the University of Rochester, Rochester, New York. And he is also the Director of Bariatric Endoscopy at the University of Rochester Medical Center. Dr. Truptesh is also on the Editorial Review Board of the Video GIE Journal and he has graciously accepted to share some of his trips, tips and tricks of how to edit our videos uh, for presentation and all also for publication. We have all experienced that we all do our procedures so well, but when it comes to presentation of the videos, very often these videos run either too long or they are too short. We never managed to probably get the gist of the video within the, the, the of the procedure in the video. And Dr. Truptesh is here to specifically to tell us how to get the heart of the video of the uh, procedure inside the video. So, with these initial comments, uh, I would like to welcome Truptesh, who is a great friend of mine. Welcome Truptesh, and I know it's morning and you have actually rescheduled your list to, uh, to be with us today. Thank you so much for that. So for the um, uh, format of this presentation will be that Dr. Truptesh will give his slight presentation which he will run us through about the procedures, uh, uh, how video editing is being performed and at the end of the procedure we will be happy to take any questions and we will have an interaction. So over to you, Truptesh, and I will now mute my mic so that there is no background noise. Thank you, Dr. Bapia. Uh, I appreciate uh, you inviting me for this uh, talk, and it's a privilege for me to talk to the audience all around the world, especially to my home country, India, and also to the U.S. Uh, population, uh, especially because we have very big on video GIE and editing and as I always tell my fellows about the video editing and the perks, the tips and the tricks that they need to apply while doing a video editing. So as you said that uh, everybody knows how to do procedures but how to showcase your highlighted version of the video is very important. So again it's a marketing strategy as we say but we need to show it in a proper way with HIPAA compliance and also not uh, revealing any patient details. So the basic gist of this video is to uh, edit the video and in a very simpler fashion for our beginners. And this will also have a glimpse of uh, how to do video editing for our intermediate levels and maybe a revision for a pro uh, professional people who are already good at video editing. We would touch on this video screen, uh, basically the origin of video editing, how did this version of video editing start with the small idea which came in the minds of three physicians in 2004. Everybody tells you about the do's of video editing, but I would like to tell you about the don'ts of video editing, which is very important, which will save your time, uh, avoid mistakes, and also try to get uh, easier for your submission and publishing. There are many softwares available in the market for video editing in the Windows version, Mac version. 
I have made a list of uh, softwares which I, according to 2020 review, has been top listed and which I like the most and how to select those softwares and how to edit uh, softwares in window version and also in the Mac version. It will be a quick glimpse of five to ten minutes. Every endoscopy journal has their format of saving files, either it could be MP4, MOV, uh, the pictures in JPEG or TIFF. So we, we need to see that and also discuss how to save those edited files in the formats required for the endoscopy journals. Again, uh, reviewing a video, how to review a video is very important, not that because I serve on the video GI editorial review board, but especially when you watch your own video, if you are satisfied with your video and if you critique your own video, that will be the best product that you can get out of yourself. So I would like also like to give a glimpse of how to review video editing. And in the last, in an algorithmic fashion, I will show you how to prepare your videos, how to edit them, how to submit it to Video GIE, and what are the transitions and audio that you need to place. It will be an all, you know, it's a, it's a single slide but a very good slide provided by me by Dr. Raji. So let's talk about the origin and the conception. In 2004, Dr. Bounds, Dr. Kelsey, and Dr. Raju, who happens to be my mentor as well, and uh, I owe my career to him. Uh, so in 2004, these three physicians, they started, uh, came up with this novel idea of how to highlight the endoscopy video in a video-based format for people to learn, especially for the junior faculties and the fellows. This was displayed uh, on a website called DAVE, that is a digital atlas, atlas of video education. And that uh, was a very hit website. I have submitted um, my videos many times on DAVE project, which led to the idea with the support of ASG that uh, they came up with this video editing scholarship uh, program for the third year fellows and the advanced endoscopy fourth year fellows in 2006. So every year they used to select uh, 20 to 30 uh, fellows around the country. And it was a one and a half day course where there used to be a crash course of video editing. And that was pretty helpful. I was a part of that uh, graduating school of uh, video editing, which led to a separate section of video GI in 2013 in the GIE journal. Now the video started trickling in so much that it became a popular hit section in the journal of GIE, which led to the independent formation of a video GIE journal in 2016. And uh, I'm privileged and happy that I was offered to be on the uh, review board of video GIE. And I really enjoy that role of mine. So, before the start of the game, you always lay the rules, and that's the same with video editing. The don'ts of video editing are very, very important. We like to record videos, especially spyglass and an endoscopy version in a picture-in-picture -picture mode. Segments are okay, but never record the video, entire video in a PIP mode which is, uh, it, it distracts the audience. Also, your editing version becomes very difficult. Just for HIPAA compliance, never reveal patient's date, birth date, uh, the date of procedure, patient's name on the video screen. That has to be totally blocked out. If you have not learned how to do the blocking out of the video data, like erasing it before, if we normally use the Olympus scopes and the Olympus processors, so the 180 version, you press F1, and on the 190 version, you press all data in order to delete the patient data right from the beginning of the procedure. And then uh, never record in segments because we want the raw material to be in a continuous fashion. Because as long as the video is recording in the continuous form, you have the ability to go back and keep on editing the segments that you need. But if you're doing a break recording, at certain point you might lose the most important aspect of the video and that might not be helpful for the presentation as also for the submission. A big no for inserting any music or any audio clap or anything like that. Uh, always have a narration in a quiet room 
and we'll touch base on that as well. And uh, I've seen that there are many, it looks good to have multiple full, four screens in a screen with a center screen, but that's not a good option because that will distract your audience from focusing on uh, the main video. So how to edit on videos? There are multiple softwares, uh, as I said, and I like to divide this uh, version into two. One is a beginner's, that is a free software normally, and then it's for, one is for pro. So the software version, especially for beginners, uh, is a shortcut on the Windows version. Shortcut is a very uh, friendly software for users and uh, who have just started or uh, beginners for video editing and it is a, has a very uh, simple interface. So it's very easy to pick and choose videos and then insert them. Then we have the popular ones that is a VSD, VVideo, Lightworks and DaVinci Resolve. The DaVinci Resolve again is a free software. It's very hard to believe it, but these are the softwares what I'm listing over here are uh, the top choice of 2020 version. And uh, coming on to the Pro, which are some are paid version as well. Uh, the top choice are Adobe Premium Pro, Corel Video Studio, Filmora, which I will show you how to edit in that, Cyberlink, VSD Pro, Power Director, Lightworks, and DaVinci Resolve Pro. Now again, the DaVinci Resolve Pro, the option from DaVinci Resolve is that you can uh, edit the video and uh, export the video in a 4K to 8K resolution. So basically it's a very crystal clear video that you can uh, present. But again, I would not suggest beginners to jump onto DaVinci Resolve because it's more, uh, you have to invest more time in order to study the software. So for somebody who just wants to start, uh, should jump onto Shortcut in the Windows version. For V-Video, for people who do not have a high-speed computer, I would suggest they can uh, use V-Video because it's more like a cloud-based or a virtual platform software where you do not have to download the software. And you can just complete your uh, video editing and save it on the virtual platform or in the iCloud-based and then take it from there. So these are the few pros and cons of uh, Windows versions. Let's jump on to how to edit on the videos uh, on Windows Media is first and foremost, which will be the same slide for Mac as well. But uh, this is the mantra that you need to follow every time when you start video editing is create a master folder on your desktop. Then try to organize all your video clips which have been saved in MP4 or MOV file uh, from the recorder put it in your desktop uh, folder, yeah, uh, retrieve all the images of the procedures, all the pathology slides, fluoroscopy slides, assemble everything. You need to have everything in the folder so that you do not have to run around getting from each and different uh, folders. Then you can start opening your video editing software, Windows version, for our presentation point, we'll have the Filmora, and once you're ready with all the basic raw material, we can start doing video editing. So let's jump on to how to perform video editing on the Windows version, which is Filmora. So I've already performed, uh, I've prepared this video so that we can go through this step-by-step uh, -step procedure. Once you open a Filmora, you go to the file, and you will have versions of your screen, 16 by 9, widescreen, Instagram is one by one, or cinema is 21 by nine. So I like to select 21, the widescreen one, and you have to import the video file onto the main event section. So you import your media file from the desktop or the folder where you have saved. Over here I've saved it in the desktop. Now I will have it on my main raw material file, insert it on the timeline. The below portion is called the timeline. It will ask you to match the media version for the resolution. Now you have the video. The basic thing in video editing is first to go through the video. 
the entire raw material you need to go through it in order for you to understand and make a mental note and also to write down points where you want to edit at what section because that will help you in uh, deciding that what is the material that is not required which is taking too much of time if i have the scope going in too much in and out i would not be liking that as a reviewer so that's one thing we need to be very careful and deciding what section we need to highlight and show to the audience so once we go through this entire video and i made a mental note of what i want to edit so now we go back i like to detach all the audio over here so the audio version is all set over here so we need to detach that audio to begin with their titles transactions effects that will do in the end first and foremost you have to start editing the video so this is these are the clips that okay fine i like to cut over here and keep it as a separate segment i would also like to go and detach the audio from here once i detach the audio it's easy for me to even delete the audio if i want because that's the audio you are you had during the procedure time so there's lot of chaos or talking going on during the procedure you do not want that while doing your video editing so again this is a portion where i want to cut and is that important for me i don't think so so that's the reason i want to delete the portion which is before this uh, timeline guide and i'm going to delete that so i start again from the first portion of the segment from where i've started i scroll the toggle right at the beginning of the segment and i'll play the segment again so these are the few basics that you need to understand that this this actual version is the segment is just uh, that the apc probe is coming in and out now the highlight of the video is this bleed the avm bleed in the small bowel and we are performing an apc of that that needs to be shown so that's the main version that a reviewer or an audience uh, would like to see that how we uh, resolved it so that is the most important but it's just a simple video for better understanding again we start the apc apc is being done right now now we have shown how how much of apc is done we do not have to show more but we need to show the final product so we can add a picture by hitting a freeze frame by clicking uh right by doing a right click and you can have add freeze frame Normally I like to keep the picture or the freeze frame to approximately 4 to 6 seconds. Uh that's usually good enough for you to convey your message what you want to and it's not a drag. So I cut the clip which was not required and deleted. So this is my edited first draft of my a uh, video segment then comes the audio which will do it in the last always that's the last thing that you want to do you can add on titles and in order to add the titles in the filmora that is a windows version the lower third seven is my favorite one you select a segment and then you right click and say apply you can drag that in the second timeline or i would say the first timeline and then adjust the time i would say the title to be approximately 4 to 10 seconds not more than that normally you would want to write it in caps 
you will see that I'm writing in a s small alphabets, but it's just a trial version over here. I'm trying to portray what we need to do over here. And starting from there, we do the transaction. This is the most important part, and I really like the transition dissolve in Filmora is because the abruptness that you get in between two clips uh, is not to be seen. So you select all the clips, and then you right click on dissolve and say apply. So that way you will have transition uh, of all the segments. Effects, split screen are all those for uh, personal videos, not for endoscopic or professional videos. You can delete the audio segment over here, uh, which was during the procedure. And then once you are happy with your entire video, then you might want to do the audio narration. The audio narration is first you need to select the clip. You need to do it in segments. Never do the entire video in one sitting because that's not going to work. You want to select one segment and then start narrating with a script in front of you that's easier in order to understand. So click on the mic. Is OK. You have to unmute your project and select speaker recording and then three, two, one, and then you start narrating. You can drag your uh, audio narration to the area that of segment that you need. And then in the last, once you're happy, you can export by creating a video. And for beginners who have not bought the software, just this is a free software, uh, you can create an account and you can use it. But again, there's a watershed mark. There's a watermark on all this uh, free softwares. So you have to be careful. So this was the version in detail. The next version that I'm going to show you is again a revision, but of the same thing what we talked about, just giving you a quick idea of how to edit. It's a two minute video. But again, this is uh, something that you need to understand and everything is reputation that's important. Again, go through the entire video, make mental points, jot down points on a paper where you want to edit. Start editing first, never go to any titles, transitions or effects. You want to detach your audio as well. Try to do that in the beginning of the pro uh, project. One more thing what I would like to tell you is that you, can, you also need to crop your video segments right at the beginning when you're doing the video editing. So there are other ways like fit to screen and crop according to your requirements. So normally I like to do it uh, fit to screen. And then the last portion is the add freeze frame, that is a picture. Adding titles, lower third seven, select the film, this clip, and then add the titles. In the transition, we normally go to dissolve. Select all the clips, apply all. And then you can export your, you can also do the audio and then export. You need to have a very quiet room when you're doing a narration. There should not be any noise in the background. And again, you always have to make sure that there is always the same tone. So you do the normalization after the procedure, uh, after the video editing. So let's move on to how to edit on Mac. 
Again, I've divided this into two uh, versions, that is a beginners and pros. And these are all the 2020 reviews. So the, for beginners, people who are using Mac, iMovie is the most friendliest version. Very easy to go, but again, it has very limited uh, screen. That is, they provide only widescreen. You cannot do a portrait or a cinema or anything like that. <laughs> then we have HitFilm Express, Shortcut, DaVinci Resolve, Lightworks, Avid Media Composer. And in the Pro section, we have the Final Cut Pro, which I normally use. The interface is similar to iMovies, so somebody who is very comfortable with iMovies can also use the Final Cut Pro. DaVinci Resolve Studio is one of the best rated professional editing softwares on Mac. Again, 4K to 8K resolution facility, Filmora Pro, Adobe Premium, and VVideo. So again, the difference between the pro and the beginners is that beginners, most of the softwares are free pro, some are free, some are paid. But again, it's the cost, uh, more features, and at the same time, uh, you also have the resolution capacity which you can increase up to 4K to 8K, just like we have in DaVinci Resolve Studio. Same concept, how to edit on Mac, create a master folder on your desktop, organize the video clips saved in MP4 or MOV files. Now some files are stored in AVI, so you cannot transfer the AVI files uh, when you're doing the video editing. It becomes difficult. Then you have to go to QuickTime Player or VLC and then convert or use um, a break handle in order to convert those AVI files to MP4 or MOV. So we can do that. Then have the image, pathology slides, fluoroscopy slides in the folder. Open the iMovie or Final Cut Pro and so I will show you on the iMovie version right now. And once the basic material is ready, we can get started with the video editing. So this is the iMovie version. Once you open the iMovie, you can click uh, right click and in the iMovie library and go new event. You can type in webinar for this video. The interface for Windows and uh, Mac has almost become the same nowadays. Select the video. This is a foreign body, a toothbrush uh, ingested by one of our uh, patients. Again, there are no details, HIPAA compliance. So the setting over here um, basically tells us uh, we can consolidate the film or also expand the film and uh, do fine editing over there. And as I mentioned, go through the entire film quickly, jot down the points, make sure what you want to edit, what you want to delete, where you want to add freeze frame. We'll start editing. First, I don't have any audio over here, so I can just, uh, otherwise my first option would be to detach the audio and then start editing. Right click, split clip. So the segments where I want to uh, split the clip, for me to better edit and fine tune it, or clip at that certain point. Now I see a transition over here I'll split the clip and then take it back. Now the titles, as we talked about in Filmora as well, again, I can select the clip and then place the title. So again, lower third is one of my favorite ones, which is also the recommended one because that does not obscure the film or what you're trying to show in the video. And once you write on the title, the text, whatever you want to show up, and then you can move it around. You can also time it accordingly. So as I said, four to 10 seconds are good enough timing for people to notice what you're trying to say. Just by the toggle, you can uh, either reduce or increase the time. Then comes transition. Again, cross is always my best option that I like and always use. 
it prevents the abruptness of transiting from one segment to the second segment of the video. Again, you have an option over there as either you want one second or 0.5 seconds. I like to do it one second because that gives me a good uh, transition. And you can apply to all or you can just select cross dissolve and try placing it manually just like I'm doing over here. Once that's done, now we do the audio narration. Select the clip. Have the cursor bar right at the beginning of the clip. Go to the recording mic. Three, two, one, start recording. So in Mac, there's a option for normalization. You can do that for the audio. Select your uh, exporting movie. And then you see that the resolution is 720 over here. You can go above as much as you want and then save it in the desktop. So that's the Mac version. Again, the quick version that I want to show for Mac, just like we did for Windows. Go to iMovie library, right click new events, type in your event. Because your films are going to stay, the raw material is going to stay in the upper portion when you import your media. iMovie especially would not take AVI files, so you have to be very careful. You drag the raw material to the timeline Go through the entire video, decide what you want to delete, start editing. This is order for better consolidation or even to expand the file and do fine tuning of video edit. Detach the audio which was there during the procedure. We start doing the clipping portion. Right click, let clip, move on to next segment of the film. Again, right click, let clip. You want to make sure that the yellow and the white line are together. If they are separate, you might have issues in the right click. Next thing, select the uh, clip and go to titles. Lower third. You can write your text, four to 10 seconds as we discussed. You can move around the text to any clip what you want. Also, you can uh, work with your timings. It could be more seconds if you want, or maybe four, four to six seconds as per the clip uh, size. Then the transition is cross dissolve. The reason I'm showing you this again and again is just for you to understand the basics of video editing. And uh, I was privileged to learn this because I had the opportunity uh, and my mentor was kind enough to take that time to teach me. So these are the few pearls that uh, which will help you in at least beginning how to do video editing and then you can fine tune everything once you are good at uh, the basics. and then start doing the audio recording.
at the top portion of the screen, uh, you will see the cropping and the camera over there. There's also a version for audio where you can balance your audio and try to make it like a normalized tone throughout the movie. You give a name, select it on your folder, wherever you want to. Resolution is 720 minimum, and then you can go up. And that was the end of uh, the video editing for Mac. How to save your files? That's our next, next uh, discussion point. Normally save it in a MOV or a MP4 format. Don't try to save it in AVI because you need a separate codec and when you're about to do a PowerPoint presentation, some window media player might have it, some might not have it. And then the new PowerPoints, they do not allow AVIs. So that's something which I try to avoid. Uh, and that's my personal opinion that I don't like to save any files in AVI. Again, the MP4 MOV can be inserted in PowerPoint slides, but not the AVI. So let's stick to MOV and MP4 format, which is also the required version for all the journals uh, of endoscopy on a worldwide base. Tips for editing. Uh, my personal opinion, store all your raw video material in a folder, never delete anything. Once you start deleting, then it's very difficult to go back and retrieve it. So whatever raw material you have, if you do not want to store it on your computer too much of uh, space, try to store it on a jump drive or a one terabyte hard drive. Effects, transition, light adjustment, audio adjustment, beautification process, all this is done at the last. Always edit the video first. Detach the audio which was done during the procedure and then start editing. And then you can add on all the beautification process because that will help you in making your editing process fast. Saving all the files in an acceptable format, MP4, MOV, and keep all the material in one folder for better access. So when times come for submission, it's easy for you to retrieve all those material. How to review a video file? As I was telling you that you are your best critic. So when you see a video, you want to understand that what you're trying to convey to the audience who's going to watch your video. Is your audio okay? Is there a noise in the background? Is there a clipping noise? Is there a key noise going on? Uh, is there a, a, a tapping noise going on in the back of, back of the video? All those things are very important when it comes to like watching a movie. So you want to be as precise as possible, normalize your video. There's a stabilization button for Macs and also for Windows that you need to convert the audio into. The tone of the audio should be the same for the entire file. Though you are recording the audio in separate segments, it should feel that you have recorded that in one sitting in the same tone. There should not be a high or a low during the audio during the entire video file because that does not go well when you are listening to a video file. The videos try to get a resolution of 720 or more, especially now with this advanced technology, 1080 is the normal. And then you can go up to 4K depending on uh, the requirement of the journal because some journals, they limit uh, to certain MBs. So you have to be careful about that. One tip that I have learned is if your MP4 files are too big and the journal requires a smaller version of the MB files, you can convert it to MOV uh, with QuickTime Player and that will help you in consolidation of your video. There might be a slight compromise of the quality, but as long as it's acceptable for you to understand and portray what you want to, it's, uh, it's good enough. The quality of video, the, sh the video should not be uh, grainy. It should not be too zoomed in. Uh, you need to not have any patient data, very important, and try to avoid multiple screens or picture in picture. So the quality of the video should be very precise to the point what you want to portray. And obviously the main purpose of uh, showcasing your procedure 
is not to that just you can do a procedure and do a video editing. It's to a take home message to people who are watching your video and learning from it. Like I have learned a lot from the video files from Dave Project and uh, also from all these videos coming in video GIE or any other journal. Uh, it, it's very important for you to just go through those procedures and the tips that you can do during the procedures. So always highlight on the learning point and the take home message for the audience. How to submit a video to video GIE. This is the algorithm and uh, definitely my talk, uh, Dr. Bapia is going to uh, help out with uh, publishing on his uh, own uh, channel and we'll also try to put it on YouTube uh, if it allows us. And But this is a screen uh, which is very important for you to understand uh, in a nutshell is uh, let's begin with the red column first. And basically you do a Mac based recording or window based recording. There are so many recorders available. Uh, what we use is the sh um, Shogun and uh, that's pretty, it's a 4K recording attached to the um, S-Video or the back of the processor of Olympus and uh, with an HDMI cable and it's very important for you to have a good recording system or you can also attach your Mac directly to the processor which will be also good in recording. Remove all the data from the screen prior to recording. Press F1 if you have the 180 scopes or if uh, processors or press all data if you have the 190s. Record and save in quick time because that will be a MOV or MP4. Then you have this transfer your endoscopy video to a dedicated video folder. Either it's a jump drive or a hard drive. And then you import to iMovies or Final Cut Pro or Filmora on the Windows version. And then you start editing the video. We talked about the video editing. You detach the audio, remove the audio, and start cropping the video to fit the screen. Cut and remove the unwanted video and then form a final export mp4 file. Coming on to the green section, you make a format uh, folder and then you can go and download the video GIE PowerPoint template and there are three options in video GIE. Uh, I would like to speak on that one is the tools and techniques, one is a video case report and one is a video case series. So those are the three options where you can submit your video. And once you prepare all entire video for, uh, folder, then the last version uh, before you submit the video is producing a video is inserting the transition and record the audio narration. Again, once you share the file as MP4, you can export it and then upload the video and other documents to video GIE. So that's in a nutshell how to start editing the video and how to submit the video to video GIE or any other journal. Mm -hmm. So I would like to thank Dr. Raju uh, over here. Um, and uh, it's it's been an honor because uh, video editing is something which is very close to us. And he has uh, given us the baton to carry on with the video editing and we would roll on to other uh, incoming fellows and the junior faculties as well. So again, I always follow this slide, we learn 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, 50% of what we see and hear, 70% of what we discuss, 80% of what we experience and 95% of what we teach to others. And definitely thank you for making me learn today because uh, that's what was the main uh, message of this entire talk. Thank you, and uh, I would like Dr. Bapia to open the forum for questions. Thank you, Gruptesh, for an excellent overview of uh, how to edit a video. And uh, I'm sure all of us, we learned a lot about uh, video editing today in Windows as well as Mac. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of questions and uh, we will definitely try and take as many questions as possible. I also have a few questions, but let me first give uh, the opportunity, you know, the uh, other participants to ask uh, some questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through 
some of the questions over here and then we can probably discuss that absolutely so there is a question by pankaj desai from surat that in i movie how do we put in the picture files what format do you use so you can put the picture files first of all uh, hello to dr desai uh, again he's a close friend just like dr bapia so the picture files you can put it in uh, normally i like, like to put it in uh, tiff uh, it could be also jpeg but jpeg is a redundant format nowadays again the capacity the mb capacity is too much for jpeg so i like to put it in a uh, tiff and then just export through the photo library to the imovies right so so there is another question by dr tarun bharadwaj he is my one of one of my earlier fellows uh, he is asking a question as to are, are there any limitations in the file size or maximum length and time for videos for submitting to journals i believe each journal has its own uh, you know limitations or whatever their restrictions are uh, you have anything to say about that no, no I, i agree with you because uh, depending on what section of the journal are you submitting to if it's a tools and technique i would speak for video gie if it's a tools and technique there is a different uh, capacity if it is a video case report then it's a longer uh, f- file capacity like 290 uh, mb if it's a video case report only then it's a shorter version so all those uh, details needs to go through um, and again it's not more than 300 mb in any of the journals available uh, in the endoscopy world right because it has to be online i believe so if the video size is too if the file size is too big then uh, probably the buffering of the video online becomes difficult and the video will probably play frame by frame and then uh, you know the viewer will not have a good experience of viewing the video i guess that right. might be one of the reasons i think and uh, uh, do you use any separate audio recorder for recording or do you use your regular computer audio for the recording no i use my regular computer audio for recording but again i'm pretty anal about my audio recording is that i sit in a very quiet room i normally sit in my office or in a very uh, secluded place in my house and then try to record but after right. audio recording you main thing as i uh, expressed in my talk was also you do stabilization you delete uh, the outside uh, noise there are options in every software where you can click on that and try to uh, have a very quiet audio in your background right to trupte ji i have a question for you ha you know we often uh, perform procedures and uh, it sometimes what happens is it starts off as a routine procedure which we are not recording in the beginning and then suddenly something springs up as a surprise and then one feels that uh, are i should have recorded this and now i have lost the opportunity so how do you address this challenge you know i think most of us have this uh, in difficulty so yeah it, it is difficult for such uh, procedures uh, because you need to show from start to beginning are uh, not advisable to get a segment of uh, the normal video from some of the procedures and then edit and try to put it but uh, exactly. this is something uh, which is a challenge for every endoscopist that uh, and especially when we are advanced endoscopists something uh, springs up and uh, which is a common thing for us but again that's the part of the challenge right what we are normally doing is we are Uh, recording all our therapeutic interventional procedures so all the diagnostic procedures we only keep Im- images but all our interventional procedures we serially record the, the videos and we have found an archival so, you know it becomes easier for us to retrieve a video if required so of that course that that is a little bit challenging because uh, you know the number of hard disks probably i've got a couple of cupboards in our unit with uh, one terabyte or larger hard disks now which are uh, stored over there and 
you know uh, archiving them and also getting the video out at that time is a, a bit of a challenge but then also probably what we are looking at currently is a cloud based platform if somebody can uh, you know maintain a cloud based platform then we don't need to have a physical storage so that is one thing right so because that is also there is a possibility of a cloud based platform able to store uh, your videos and uh, we are working on that platform right now at our uh, university as well in order to try to save all this not to the hard drive but because that will also help with the hipaa compliance there won't be any um, if if you store all your videos on a hard drive or a jump drive and if you happen to lose the jump drive or the hard drive then it's uh, not a good idea yeah, no. because you are you it's more work and also you are losing patient details so yeah. that's something which is not acceptable so cloud based server uh, archival of videos is the ideal way to go and that also helps you in selecting videos pretty easily whenever you need it right so drupta there is a question from new south wales australia so you've got really a global audience today uh, dr jyoti murugesan So she's asking you which software software do you use? Do you use the DaVinci Resolve or do you just use the iMovies? No, I use the Final Cut Pro for my Mac. I normally do editing on Final Cut Pro. But as as you know, I started with Windows uh, in 2006, and at that point there was a Ulid was the software which we used to use. Then came the Corel. Uh, I like Filmora pretty. Uh, it's pretty. Uh, acceptable software and uh, the features are very sharp but again i'm very comfortable with final cut pro so that's what i use uh, for my regular video editing right so turkish after having used windows and mac both for video editing what is your personal choice now uh, now my personal be, you know i i know i don't know whether you own uh, shares of either apple or microsoft but you may have to put that disclaimer <laughs> right right so no, so i in this day and age i do not uh, do a share marketing or anything like that but uh, again uh, i'm pretty comfortable with mac okay so what well, see uh, for a person who's probably starting to do video editing and just wants to take the first steps would you say that start with mac or start with windows windows or either one is okay whatever is comfortable with i would say either one is okay but once you start you stick to that okay that's good right so while we were we are on the topic of final cut pro this is one question which i wanted to ask you i have been using i i movie all this while but sometimes many people have told me that final cut pro is probably better than i movie so what are the advantages of final cut pro over the just the i movie if you could just so again, elaborate on some of this thing yeah so as i told you when you start with your project selecting right. the screen i movie will just give you wide screen it would right. not give you any cinema screen or if you want to post your video on instagram it would not give you that option also so just to begin with the screen is one of the features that it will give you and there are so many other effects that you can uh, use in a final cut pro like revolving or reflection so those are the things that you want to um, showcase in your uh, videos which is helpful with final cut pro like revolving as i say for a floor um, a cat scan or an mri basically for an mri with a reconstruction image of the bile duct and the pancreatic duct you want to show it in a revolving fashion or just a cardiac uh, a feature of uh, the ct angio you want to show that that would be helpful with the final cut pro which you are not able to do with imovie so that's just one of the tip that you can distinguish between imovies and final cut pro and there are many others again resolution i movies resolution is limited 720 to 1080 is the max final cut pro will give you more than that so again okay. uh it's a paid software so any paid software has its own perks and more features right right uh truktesh one more question which i had is uh, particularly when we are editing uh, an ercp or you know some another uh, some other procedure which requires two inputs or two screens to be shown now for an ercp for example sometimes you want to show the endoscopy screen as well as the fluoroscopy screen at the same time 
Now you mentioned right in the beginning of your talk that uh, we should not, uh, we should avoid getting a picture and picture kind of a video right in the beginning. But then in that case, whenever we are editing, we can only get it one after the other rather than getting two parallel screens uh, in one frame. Now, right. how do we address that issue? So, as per the editing part, you have time timelines. So, just like the title timeline is above the selected mm -hmm. film, you can place that film right above in the title timeline. And that way you can have both screens and there's a split screen. Okay. So, that is helpful in order for you to show two screens. Like I understand fluoroscopy and an endoscopy image is important in ERCP or a spyglass. And that's something, but again, it's just a segment that you are showing. You are not showing the entire video in a split screen or a PIP. So that's, that is what I wanted to focus on. Right. And you could probably use the same way you could have an external video. For example, when uh, one is doing a poem or an ESD, then you also need to show the hand movement sometimes. So mm -hmm. in that situation, you can probably record on the iPhone or something or some other recording device and right. draw that video also onto the same platform and then, you know, combine the two to kind of, uh, you know, get a combined video. Correct. It's the so same concept. Think, right. So I did, I had written down, yeah, there is one question which I would, wanted to ask you is that what, what is the optimal length of a video that one would want to uh, insert in a PowerPoint presentation when one is giving a talk or something of that sort. You know, I understand that video GIE has six to eight minutes, endoscopy has three minutes, four minutes. So those journal specifications are independent. You know, mm -hmm. that, that goes by journal specifications, whatever. But mm -hmm. very often we edit videos that we use them in PowerPoint. So what is right. the optimum time of a video that one should use in a PowerPoint? So that's a very good question because I, uh, as you know, I was uh, trained with Dr. Haber and I had the privilege to make videos uh, for Dr. Haber when uh, he was running around doing his procedures. And uh, fortunately, he would have the talk tomorrow and uh, he would be like, Tutesh, can you make the video tonight? But then the question was, how many minutes video should I make? And that is what the answer was, approximately 30 to 60 seconds. And then he would, uh, whatever video I have given to him, he would final cut, edit that, and try to, to make it 30 seconds. So I would say 30 to 45 seconds is a prime time for the video because that uh, attracts the audience much, unless the procedure is a longer one like poem, which you cannot show it in 30 seconds or 40 seconds. But if it's an ERCP procedure, I think 30, 40 seconds are the ideal time uh, to keep the audience engaged and uh, you can move on to the other slides and videos. Right. Uh, Truptesh, there is a question from Dr. Harishit Khara. Mm -hmm. uh, he's asking how to import the, a PowerPoint slide into a video editing software. So, first of all, hi to Dr. Khara. Thank you for... Uh, coming on the podium to ask a question. So basically the PowerPoint slides, uh, once we say, you have to save the PowerPoint into two versions. One is the PowerPoint presentation and one is uh, save as a picture. And that will be either a JPEG or a TIFF file. And that itself would be stored in a folder and then it would be a picture slide rather than just a P, uh, PowerPoint slide. And then you can just drag it or you can select as a photo library uh, from your uh, photo gallery to your power video editing software. Okay. And I prefer so the question yeah, sorry. Yeah. The no question is just going in and uh, there's a lot of questions yet. A uh, few questions on the hardware requirements and what mm -hmm. hardware do you use to record the video and mm -hmm. how to connect the MacBook to the processor. Uh, uh, these are the two questions. Right. And uh, someone has also asked, we have a 190 system Olympus. Can I connect it to, to the MacBook? How? Uh, I'm just trying to combine a few questions because otherwise you won't, for, you know, right. <laughs> we'll continue. You know. Right, right. So basically, um, 
some some uh, your endoscopy units do have a facility to connect the IMAX directly to the processor and there is a S video along with the HDMI on the other side and uh, or a converter which would help you connect to the processor which is on the back of uh, the processor there is a, a pin where you connect like a S video section and then you have the cable running straight to as an HDMI to the iMac for direct recording or uh, as I mentioned there are many softwares like Shogun or um, black box and uh, this would help you record in 4k and uh, 8k a configuration and once you save it and then you can transfer it through hdmi to your uh, editing software directly or on the folder of your mac or windows or wherever you are going to edit it so this process is very important uh, again i prefer to do it on a uh, portable recording device because that uh, allows me to take that device into my office and download the video to my uh, iMac or uh, laptop and then try editing it with uh, Final Cut Pro. Right. We use uh, a software called a Scopy Doc in our unit and there is another mentoring software that we are currently using called MediMentor which can mm-hmm. also have uh, that has the ability to actually uh, even annotate on the screen so that can be used so all these features are there i think there are several softwares that are available yes. as well as hardware uh, options so that is there so i think some questions we have already you have already addressed does video editing on mac offer any advantage over windows so i think they are quite similar a few things here and there i guess but today you can take that question no, I think that as I showed the Filmora and iMovies, the interface is almost the same. I don't see anything is different, uh, especially um, if you do Final Cut Pro, then it is a combined version of Windows and Mac, to be honest with you, and you will get the best of both worlds. And uh, that is my take on Final Cut Pro, but again, I do not see anything is hard then Windows or it's uh, or the Mac version is uh, easier or anything like that. And both are the same and it's very easy to do it. Right. Uh, does video editing on... Okay, that's rare. Can you suggest any specifications that one should include for the audio component of the videos recorded? Is it just narration of the procedure in a mundane way or you can have you can give some interpretations as well? This is Dr. Gaurav Muktesh from PGI Chandigarh. So, when you have the slides and you are you do, uh, you are reading the slides uh, when you are narrating it, but again, the goal is if you are reading the slides, you want your interpretation projected on the slide as well. So I would not be just uh, having a slide run through the video file uh, and then in my video file and then just keep on interpreting as an audio. I would want whatever is my thinking as interpretation to be reflected on the slide itself in writing and always have a transcript as I said because it's difficult sometimes to uh, assemble all your thoughts and talk while you're doing audio narration. So that is very important and uh, yeah, that's it. That's, That's the tip I can give for audio other than what I've already mentioned. Right. Truptesh, Dr. Greg Aber from New York has congratulated both of us on a wonderful review and excellent transmission. He's, he's asking which company are we using, so uh, we would again like to thank M- MQR for uh, giving us this opportunity. And I think they're using an app called as Blue Jeans. Uh, that's, a, that's the app that they're using for this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, there's one more question. Uh, who, Dr. Az- Dr. Azim from Telangana who is asking that uh, can we do labeling or annotations uh, to highlight certain specific parts of the video? Uh, of the video? Yes, video that's video. where the title comes into play. Yeah, so the title the title format can be used to do that. And so that brings to me, me to one question which I wanted to ask, I forgot. Sometimes uh, we have to incorporate uh, or we have to hide some parts of the video, particularly the patient's face or something or 
यू नो फॉर प्राइवेसी कंड यू नो इश्यूज तो हाउ डू यू डू दैट इन द वीडियो बेसिकली यू विल हैव टू प्रिपेयर वॉट आई वुड सजेस्ट इज इधर यू डू इट थ्रू पावर पॉइंट लाइक मेक अ ब्लैक बॉक्स एंड जस्ट टेक इट टू द वीडियो स्क्रीन और द सेकेंड ऑप्शन इज यू कैन यूज द टेक्सट बॉक्स द टाइटल एंड मेक इट फिल इट विद इधर वॉट एवर कलर यू वॉन्ट एंड यू कैन प्लेस दैट टेक्सट बॉक्स ऑन द फेस ऑफ द पेशेंट दैट इज कवरिंग द पेशेंट फेस ओके So those are the two things that you can do and uh, it's a li- little bit difficult sometimes to do that process of uh, hiding the details but again it's doable all right i think there is one more question by from dr siddhar dharam singh uh, again one of my earlier fellows he is asking why are journals so strict about time restrictions or some cases when some cases some videos may need more time than others considering the complexity I believe Siddharth is asking this question because very often we face this issue that uh, you want to put in so much of information. <laughs> so, it, uh, probably Siddharth has had a tough time while he was with us uh, uh, while we editing some videos, which I asked him right. to do. <laughs> no, it is a good question because it's always difficult that you want to incorporate more, but you have limited time. So that's where the editing skills comes into play, where you can. uh just like a movie film a hollywood or bollywood movie they are shooting for 6 months and they are incorporating everything in 2 hours so that's where the video skills come into play where you want to highlight the most touched points that is the most important part of uh, video editing and showcase in a way that you are satisfied with your product and you convey the same message to the audience who already knows that after watching the video would realize this is not a 5 minute video this is A procedure must be at least an hour. Right. So I think, uh, Tupdesh, uh, we've already overshot that one hour slot that we MQR had actually given us. I think the questions we've taken practically all the questions. Some of the questions were already answered during the discussion or during the presentation. So we will, you know, please apologize if we've not uh, taken every question over here. But. Uh, <coughs> I think uh, I would again once again like to thank Dr. Truptesh for uh, sparing his valuable time. Truptesh, would you want to say something? I, I would like to thank. Uh, no, no, absolutely. First of all, thank you to everyone for uh, taking out time to listen to this webinar and uh, to audience all over the world. And uh, I appreciate Dr. Bapia helping out with uh, coming up with uh, this entire uh, idea. of uh, doing a webinar for video editing and i also thank mqr for uh, supporting us so thank you very much and uh, everybody and uh, have a nice day and uh, stay safe in this crisis thank you truptesh for uh, sparing your time it's i know it's morning over here and uh, over there and you must be having to rush to the hospital for uh, your uh, list uh, one a couple of points before we sign off from here Uh, once again, a big thank you to MQR for arranging this webinar and sending across uh, the invites to uh, everyone so that you all could all join. We would also want to thank all the participants for joining in. I believe there were about seven uh, hundred or eight hundred participants who have logged in for this webinar today. And one point, this webinar. was organized uh, uh this webinar was organized through our foundation the foundation for research and education and in and endoscopy and uh, once we get the video file from the from mcr pharma we will definitely be uploading this file this video on to our youtube channel the free youtube channel which is a teaching video channel so it will remain there so uh, for subsequent viewing for anyone who wants to revisit this video again this presentation again or even any of your colleagues who missed out attending this interesting session so with this a uh, few words i would like to thank everyone once again and uh, have a very good evening and a great day uh, ahead for all my north american friends 
and thank you so much bye bye and stay safe bye. in these difficult times bye bye thank you thank you thank you